Today we look at alternative dreadnought mahogany guitars. If you're looking for a big booming mahogany guitar, but something that says something other than Martin or Gibson, stay tuned. Hey, you're watching Alamo Music TV. My name is Chris McKee. And what's up guys? My name is Cooper Greenberg over here at Alamo Music Center in San Antonio, Texas. Chris, where can you find us online? Find us online at alamomusic.com. <laughs> If you want to subscribe to our channel, do that. Hit the uh, like button and all the other good stuff. If you want to support the channel, visit our spring store link below. And where, where can they find our podcast? What's it named? It's called the Fretboard Confessional. That's and it's a, the best one that's out there. So find it in the description below. It's the best podcast I'm on for sure. Yeah, I've been on a few other ones. so. And it's still know. the best podcast? I don't know. You've ever heard of Cover Stories? Cover Stories. Good podcast. So today we are looking at some alternative dreadnoughts of the mahogany persuasion, um, specifically something that's not from Gibson or Martin, because if you look at high-end dreadnought acoustic guitars made of mahogany, typically it's like a D18, it's, uh, it's a hummingbird, hummingbird, it's a J45, yeah. yeah. Uh, but if you, if you kind of want to be in the know, you know, if you want to be the cool kid in the corner that knows what's up, you might look at some other alternatives and find amazing guitars. Now, specifically today, we're looking at two that are kind of a part in price but represent great value opportunities. The first one I have in my lap is a guitar I dubbed a few years back, potentially the best guitar of the year. I don't even remember how long ago that was. It had to be like 17 2019, or 18, 18? 19, something like that. Yeah. You know, because we went through a pandemic and they were hard to get and all of that other stuff. But this is the Yamaha Red Label FGX5. And you know what? I played this today and I was like, yeah, my opinion still stands. This is one of the best values there is in all solid wood acoustic guitars. Yeah. And you've got... I've got a D40 traditional from Guild, made in the USA, also an incredible mahogany spruce dreadnought. And I will say, yes, everybody thinks about Hummingbird, J45, D18, and they're sold out all the time. Mm -hmm. Both of these are pretty hard to come by in our store because I think those people who know... They, you know, but yeah. the greater public. Let's know. talk about how hard they are to come by, and then we'll talk about specs. So we reviewed this guitar, and we basically, for a long time, were just sold out. Every time we got one, it immediately sold. I'm glad this was in stock to shoot today. I know some big retailers, they're currently sold out. So yeah. this has continued to be a very popular guitar. Um, I'm not going to take all the credit, but I'll take some of it. And then on the D40, I can't take any credit, because the truth is... I have never really had a chance to do a review. You know, you did a cheap versus expensive with this, right? I did Just recently. The D40 versus the D140. That's pretty recent, so it might be in the feed. But if you know, we can link that one above as well. Um, D140 import guitar made in China follows very very similar yeah. blueprint. Also a great guitar, um, but we fell in love with that Westerly collection stuff. Yeah. And we get a D40 once in a blue moon, and finally we were like, dude, we need more D40s and go well, a little deeper. So you, I'll, if you don't know the story with this, Cooper, every time I've ordered this guitar, before I got a chance to review it, we sold the guitar. Yeah. Every single time. Yeah. Um, and we, it wasn't like we were ordering one at a time. We'd order several that, you know, one would come in, it would sell, wouldn't have a chance to record it. Next one, same thing. So, hey, finally, you know, we've been trying to get together, been trying to contact you about your car's extended warranty. So, yeah, glad to finally be filming the Venerable D40. So let's talk about what's the same between these two guitars because a lot of the recipe is very, very similar. Dreadnought body, spruce top, mahogany back sides, mahogany neck. That's a layered neck. That's mahogany rosewood it's, uh, or walnut. I think it's that walnut stripe, yeah. which um, is very cool. Different neck shapes. This one is more of a traditional kind of C shape. They don't see that flattens out to a D as it goes into the heel, which is kind of cool. First time you put your hands on it, it's like, that's different, but it's very comfortable. Uh, open gear tuners in both cases, very understated, uh, you know, features and embellishments, dot inlays and, and you know, basically plain rosettes and, and whatnot. Just the things that matter for the most part. Yeah. Now this is a satin finished, polyurethane finished guitar that is gloss nitro. Pretty cool. Yeah. So let's talk about what's unique on each of these guitars. The FGX5 features a torfied spruce top with scallop bracing that's using Yamaha's proprietary ARE, which is acoustic resonance 
experiment? Exceptionalism. Oh. Yeah, enhancement. Uh, system. It also has a very nice atmosphere pickup system in it, which is a three-sourced pickup. Uh, I geeked out when we first heard about it. Uh, me and Chris Klein were yeah. like, three-source, no phasing issues. Tell us you know, what's going yeah. on. Um, so that's one of the more very, underrated cool. preamp systems, I think. I mean, because you get them in Yamaha guitars, and yeah. so there's not anybody that's like, oh, I got myself a D40, I want to put that atmosphere in there, because you got to get them in a Yamaha. Right. But a ton, I mean, I feel like more and more people are coming in and being like, oh, I don't know about pickups that are put into guitars in the factory, I might want to buy something separate and put it in like an Anthem or whatever, and then I show them how that works, and it's always... A crowd pleaser. Yeah, it's interesting. Totally unrelated to this video, but since you brought that up, I will say, because I was reading a comment stream on Facebook the other day, a lot of people have a lot of opinions and a lot of issues with guitars on their, or pickups on their acoustic guitars. I did a full video breakdown on why that probably is. We utilize a Taylor, because Taylor sells so many acoustic electric guitars. I hear a lot of people like, I, I don't like the ES2, I'm having trouble with it, whatever. So do yourself a favor, check out that video on our channel because there's a lot to it that you, as a guitar player, really should educate yourself about. So I digress. So Torfi Top, Scallop Bracing, all solid construction, great pickup system. Let's talk about what's unique on that. Are you familiar with specs? I mean, one, Nitro Finish. Nitro for Finish, sure, for sure. Which is very cool, but what else do you have in mind? So it's featuring uh, a high-grade Sitka Spruce Top, mahogany back and sides, it's scallop bracing, but it's Adirondack bracing, uh, which I've said before, I have this on a custom guitar of mine. I, I've, I think it was Bob Taylor I heard say that if you do Addy bracing, it gets you like 80 to 90% of the way there of, of how an Adirondack top will respond. And so you have that stiffness, but you have that elasticity. And so it tends to generate the movement of the top as being very... Uh, kind of responsive, direct, yeah. poppy. You can get a lot of volume and warmth at the same time. So you couple that with the bracing pattern on there. And the bracing pattern in guilds is, is interesting and unique. You look in the sound hole like that or D55, and you see a scallop even on the bracing uh, around the sound hole, which is usually like a nothing popsicle stick bracing, you know, or yeah. it's a really thick overbuilt brace. It's rare that you see this extreme scallop, and it's and it's. I mean, honestly, the inside of that guitar is nicer than most people's homes. It's a it's a look at it. It's like perfectly shaped and and sanded, and it's pretty yep. crazy. And it smells so good. Even looking down from the neck, right above the X joint, there's a yeah, scallop you can see brace. Right there. That's crazy. That's <laughs> so cool. And so I think a lot of that produces this just booming sound. Yeah. Uh, and crispness out of the guitars. So, a lot to this is the same. There's a few things different. Let's check out the demo, and then we'll talk about the rest on the other side of it. So, put on your best headphones, you know, or your best speakers, and take a listen.
All right, so there you have it. The comparison between the Yamaha FGX5, red label, and Guild D40 traditional. Now we should say there is a D40 non-traditional, that's why this says traditional in it. Specs are a little bit different on that, so make sure that you, if you are shopping around, that you pay attention to that because you will see different options, different features, and different pricing between those, and I'm just gonna say I prefer the D40 traditional. It's that Addy bracing and nitro finish. I, it just, it's a thin finish, it's very resonant, yeah I, yeah, I I like it. So you did a, a another video with this. I'd like to hear your thoughts before I comment on the tone that this guitar has. Well, part of that video, since it was comparing it to the D140, was sort of propping up how good that Westerly Collection stuff is. Sure. And it's those are fantastic guitars. But there's something about I talked, you know, that Sitka versus Adirondack makes a big difference in just how it feels and the response. I love the nitro finish. And also, kind of at the end of the day, it was like the D40 is a legendary guitar that's just not mentioned enough, you know? Right. Um, and so there's something about this guitar. If I mean, there's some newer artists that I've seen playing vintage guilds, and I think it's sort of making this comeback in like indie singer-songwriter music. Guild is a trusted name that is beloved that I don't think you can get much better like, I think this one goes right up there with the D18. Um, and it's just, it's awesome. The thing is, the sound to me, it sounds a little different than what I'd imagine with like a spruce mahogany. It's pretty bright mm -hmm. and it almost sounds more modern to me than like this guitar. Mm -hmm. um, this has got sort of that warm, lo-fi vintage tone. This is a very bright, almost pop music like acoustic guitar tone, which I think is really cool, but that's my vibe. How do, do you agree? Uh, I don't agree with the modern, but I do agree with it being bright and different. But to me, it's kind of like the difference between a Gibson Mahogany and a Martin D18. That's I cool. think Martin D18s have that brightness, you know, yeah. that pop that goes with them. And that's why there are so many flat pickers that love a D18. Yeah. You know, because if you take a flat pick too and you start doing runs, you know, particularly on the low notes, that bass is there, but it's it's a defined bass. Yeah. You know, rather than one that's very round, it's a more pointed aspect of it. You don't have the overtones that you do with rosewood, which is another reason mahogany is great because it's got that mid range, but it's also a very dry, fundamental, uh, you know, priority tone wood. You're yeah. hearing that note, you know, not a bunch of fuzzy, you know, overtones around it. You're hearing that note, yeah. and that note's very clear, and it rings out, and it sustains. Um, and so, yeah, I really liked that. But to your point, uh, to that warmer edge, kind of where you know vintage Gibson type stuff used to be, yeah, that Yamaha. I say where Gibson used to be. Well, I mean, <laughs> I'm talking about like vintage Gibson. No, yeah, I guess yeah, you. that's what I mean. So vintage Gibson sound um, yeah. is more. I mean, this doesn't sound like a Gibson, but that warmth is more along the lines of it. And I say it doesn't because it has a lot of articulation. Yeah. Uh, a lot of times with an older Gibson. Not so much their current uh, mahogany stuff, but particularly an older D45. It's there's not a lot of definition. It's kind of like it's a it's a body of sound, which is a, yeah. a really nice thing. But when you want that definition and warmth, yeah. um, that doesn't always work. And that has that warmth, a lot of warmth actually. Yeah, you know, but it's still articulate. It's like that. Uh, just when you're talking about it, it's this body of sound. It's like. Phil Spector produced yeah. a mahogany dreadnought. You know, it's like Wallace sound. You don't hear a little bit. You don't hear everything, but you hear a little bit of everything. Yeah, and it's cool. Yeah, and then he kills you. Um, <laughs> but <was> dark fast. <laughs> I mean, you said Phil Spector had a bad Here we go. visual image. Anyway. Well, I just think about I think about all things must pass. George Harrison. Mm -hmm. That record is like this huge wall of reverb, and it, yeah. you know, it's not crisp, but it's cool because of that. We didn't even, I don't think we mentioned, this is Guild USA, this is made in Japan. Mm -hmm. Something I think a little special about high-end beautiful guitars made in Japan, there's just kind of this whole different feel and sound and kind of vibe around them. Well, and Japan has this long history of craftsmanship, uh, particularly when it comes to musical instruments. There are some phenomenal luthiers building yeah. guitars in Japan. If you ever go to like, uh, you know, a guitar festival that's focused on acoustic guitars, or or you go to the, some of the small booths in Nam yeah. where it's like individual builders, 
uh, you'll see these, and, and the aesthetics are, uh, you know, different. Yeah. Uh, and I love them, typically, and uh, the quality is just there. And Yamaha has that same long uh, history, mm -hmm. both of craftsmanship as well as innovation. So what's great about these is, you know, we talked about this cutting-edge pickup system being put into a vintage-inspired guitar looking back to their first guitars they imported yeah. to the U.S. Um, yeah. And I really dig it. There's only one thing I don't like about that guitar, and it's the, the button shape on the tuners. That's it. It's a little pointy, and I don't like it if I'm going to, like, nitpick. That's on this guy. I know. Also, the pick guard has a weird feel to it. It's rosewood, but I don't know. It, oh, you're done with wood pick guards? No, it's the 816 it, Builders Edition. I, you I, said that. I played it today, and it was just like it felt, I don't know, different. Maybe it's just me. So the That's other funny. thing we should talk about these guitars, though, is they sound different. They also cost different. The Guild USA D40 Traditional is a th about a thousand dollars more yeah. than the FGX5, and so that speaks to two things. One, the fact that a USA-made product is still that much more expensive, yeah. um, despite this being Japanese-made and all-solid wood construction. Um, that having a pickup, because you can get actually the non-pickup version for less. Good luck finding it, uh, but it is available. FG5. Yeah. If you're searching. Yeah. Um, but they're both really, really phenomenal guitars. That speaks to, again, that value proposition yeah. we've been talking about with that guitar for a while. But again, if I'm gonna nitpick, I will say this. In this demo today, just on these two guitars, this guitar plays better. Out of the box, out of the case, the setup on this Guild is perfect. Yeah. That needs more work. It has a bit too much relief in the neck. And so if you go back and watch the demo, you might see there's times where my fingers were literally in the middle, like trying to find, trying to you know, hunt for that chord yeah. before I landed it because the strings were high enough off the fretboard. And so, you know, I will give an edge to the guild. Is yeah. it worth a thousand dollars? I mean, you can have that set up, but you know, it's certainly. And if you need a pickup, you're in for a couple more hundred dollars. True. They both have a really nice hard shell case, so you don't have to worry about that. Actually, the Guild's hard shell case is really cool because it has a built in uh, humidifier. Yeah. Little puck, so that's nice. So, you know, that saves you 15 bucks right there. <laughs> Get out of here. Um, yeah, I think for me, since the price is so different, it's got to be a different kind of pitch on both. Yeah. For me, if you're looking for a high end mahogany dreadnought, between two to three thousand dollars, and you're looking for your D18, you got to play this and then make your choice after that because probably a lot of people would, might want this more after playing it. And to that point, I have long wanted and still want to do a comparison for all of you where we compare this to a D18. The problem is, we've rarely had this in stock where we can film it, and then trying to have a D18 in stock right now at the same time has been difficult. But yeah. We are working on it. Hopefully, Martin will get us some more D18s. Yeah. So. And then the other end, I'd say this is probably the best value acoustic guitar on the market. Man, it's really hard to beat, isn't it? Yeah. It's uh, typically people just come at us with, these are the things that I want. Tell me what it's going to be. And for price, wood pairing, build quality, sound, this one always is. And it's tough because I'm like, well, it sounds like you want an FGX5. See you in a year. <laughs> <laughs> but luckily, Yamaha has actually gotten us FGX5s, FSX5s, um, which is the concert body. Very cool guitar as well. I just think if you're going for a mahogany spruce guitar, get yeah. yourself a dreadnought, get boomy. Um, so, but yeah, I think this is the, the value right here. It really is. I think the more and more people uh, find that guitar. Now, you know, here's the downside. We're going to continue to talk it up, and it's going to get so popular, it's going to go up in price. It's around fifteen hundred dollars now, so you know maybe maybe we keep it a secret a little longer. You know, I'll hold this. I'll forget hold this you, video. Forget you watch this video. For years. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> Ignore the Yamaha. No, it's a fantastic guitar. It really is. Um, I would change out if I if I buy one, I'll change out the tuners, and then I'll be happy. What would you put in there? A little Waverly, a little Butterbean. Something. Yeah, I just I don't like the shape. It's just I don't know. I know it's traditional. I know, but yeah. <sighs> Whatever. Yeah, it is what it is. If you'd like more information about these guitars, you should go to a website called alamomusic.com. Yeah. Yeah. When I lay it down, you need to pick it up faster. 
Almomusic.com. <laughs> and the thing is, when you shop by brand and you click Yamaha, it's going to take you to some pre-owned pianos. Yes. Go over sure. to the guitar side. We'll get that fixed. That's because Yamaha makes everything. They make, you can buy from our website a piano, a digital piano, a keyboard, a synthesizer, a trombone, a trumpet, uh, a drum set, a digital drum set, a guitar, what am I An leaving? An ATV. Uh, electric guitar. <laughs> yeah. Speed A motorcycle. Boat? We yeah, don't have yeah. that. That's on our, that's coming to our website soon. Motorcycles. That's Alamo Cycleplex. They're right off I-10. <laughs> They'll get you over there. It's called a collab. Yeah. So yeah. So uh, guitar area, Yamaha, Gill. We've got some great offerings from both companies in right now. But if you are trying to compare the two, you can also chat with someone live, look at all the photography and everything. Um, and yeah, just get in, try it out for yourself because uh, I, honestly, neither guitar disappoints. So, yep. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, turn on notifications, like our videos, all that jazz. And remember, at the end of the day, the best guitar in the world is the one that you're playing. Keep playing, keep coming back. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.